possible uh, Indonesians have seen this film? It's possible to see it there? Yeah, very widely. In fact, anyone, if you were in Indonesia now, you could go to activekilling.com and there would be immediately the film for you to download for free. You could go to YouTube and you would, there would be the film for you to watch for free. We send DVDs to anyone who wants to see them, to, wants to hold a screening course for free. Um, but more, than, more, more generally, I'll just explain how we brought the film out in Indonesia. Our whole strategy for releasing the film there has been to avoid the film being banned. Because we knew that if we simply if we wanted to release it commercially or in theaters in the normal way, we would first have to submit the film to the censors and they would likely ban the film. If the film's banned, it becomes a crime to show the film at all. And if it's a crime to show the film at all, even to watch it in your own home with some friends, that becomes an excuse for Panchasila youth or the army to physically attack screenings and get away with it. So to avoid that, we knew we had to build up high level political, media, and cultural support for the movie before we started bringing it out. We held screenings throughout the autumn of 2012, so a bit over a year ago, after the international premiere. We held screenings at the National Human Rights Commission in Jakarta for Indonesia's leading filmmakers, celebrities, artists, intellectuals, writers, educators, human rights activists, survivors groups, but also news editors and news publishers. The media's response to the film was particularly profound. The editor of Indonesia's leading newspaper contacted me after, his, after he saw it and said, Josh, there was a time before the act of killing in Indonesia, now there will be a time after the act of killing. I've been censoring stories about the genocide ever since I've been in this job, and I'm not going to do it anymore. Because your film shows me, above all, that I do not want to grow old as a perpetrator. And so we are going to break our silence on the genocide. We're going to do so in a way where we support the film by showing that the film is essentially a repeatable experiment that could have been made anywhere in our country. That these problems of gangsterism and thuggery and fear and impunity and corruption, these are systemic problems. That Anwar is perhaps one of 10,000 perpetrators of his rank. So they sent 60 journalists around the country and in less than two weeks came back with nearly a thousand pages of boastful perpetrators that they encountered everywhere they went. Essentially doing what I did in those first two years before I met Anwar, but across the country. They published 75 pages of this material, plus 25 pages of um, essays, reviews, interviews about the film in a special double edition of Tempo magazine, Indonesia's equivalent to Time, perhaps, or The Economist, or Der Spiegel in Germany, the, big, the main news magazine in the country. They published a special double edition on the 1st of October 2012. It sold out immediately. They reprinted it. It sold out again. They reprinted it. It sold out again. Because Indonesians, and then now it's come out as a book, because Indonesians were astonished that this Holocaust that underpins the whole system that no one ever has talks about in the media suddenly was filling the most important, a double edition of the most important news publication in the country. The rest of the media followed suit, and that create, and then the rest, and then the pu public intellectuals, uh, public figures from across the spectrum of Indian, across Indonesian society, came out in support of the film with.